I'm going to start concluding here, but I, I, last night I said something that a number of you asked me to sort of repeat, so I'm just going to repeat the outline for this, but the details are, are in much greater depth than the boy crisis, which is a lot of people ask me about what were the four must-dos that every legislator has to incorporate uh, into equal shared legislation. So look at the details about why equal time is so important. Number two, look at the details about why 20 minutes of drive time is about what should be the max for a father and mother of divorce to, uh, to, to be with each other. I mentioned one of, the, one of the reasons last night. Number three, look at why bad mouthing is so poisonous. If I were to label a single most abusive thing that we can do, even worse than hitting a child, severely is bad mouthing. The psychic damage that bad mouthing, especially the same sex parent, is, uh, does is enormous. Number four, as I mentioned last night, communication counseling. Uh, Ginger mentioned that I said once a month. No, once a month is the minimum um, of communication counseling, um, but it's obviously better to do it more than uh, once a month or relationship counseling if, you, if divorce is, is um, unavoidable. Um, what can schools do? What can we help our legislators know what schools can do? The number one um, most important thing is probably developing very uh, robust vocational education programs in our school. Number two is having about 50% male teachers in the school. Number three is the restoring of recess. Number four is training our sons to be father warriors in school so that they begin to be prepared to be fathers when they're younger and know the importance of that. This means helping our sons know how to retain the best of heroic intelligence and the best of health intelligence. Heroic intelligence has a lot of virtues that the schools are today are looking right past in, in favor of toxic masculinity being the um, appellation. Children need to know both boys and girls what the virtues of traditional masculinity is, why almost all our inventions are done by males, why risk taking and exploring our, pre our precedents to um, inventing. Uh, why our daughters who uh, are to be trained to take sexual risks, not just have the sexual risk be blamed on uh, taken by boys and then boys be blamed when they do it too quickly or laughed at when they do it too slowly. We need to train our daughters to take those sexual risks also. That's training our daughters to be risk takers, which trains our daughters to be inventors, to which change our, change, trains our daughters to think outside of the box. Uh, we have to, uh, and it also trains our daughters, like our sons, to have a willingness to fail, and then when you fail, to get up and try again. Um, we need to hold, males are trained to a much greater degree. In school, hierarchies are um, accused of being male. Yes, hierarchies are what you do to become accountable. Accountability is a very positive thing. You didn't get, you didn't get promoted until you were accountable. When you were accountable, you got rewarded by being promoted. Um, we uh, Learning that the, when the going gets tough, you need to know when the tough get going and when the tough need to get going to the therapist to make sure that they aren't being self-destructive. So it's the balance between those two that are needed. Heroic intelligence by itself takes these virtues to the extreme. It's important to know when the going gets tough what that balance is between those two. Our sons have to know that in isolation, heroic intelligence is socialization for a short life and health intelligence, but whereas health intelligence is having that balance so you have the courage and the virtues of masculinity so we don't allow our school systems to throw out the baby with the bathwater. A balanced dad is the first step toward helping our children become balanced children. Solutions to the boy crisis must be addressed simultaneously in the family, in schools, and by policymakers. That's why this group is so important. You have felt the emotional pain of dad deprivation, and yet you're activists who want to do something about it. I spent a, a few days in, in Iowa trying to educate the Democratic presidential candidates about the importance of father involvement. I'm now working with the Trump administration, along with Ron Henry, who's here, uh, to create a White House Council on Boys and Men to make the boy crisis a national priority. 
and father involvement in national priority. In conclusion, We've seen that, uh, we have seen in what I've just said, that as developed, as developed nations solved one problem, survival, they allowed new freedoms that created new problems. And the boy crisis has grown in the fertile soil of families without fathers. We have seen but a few of the more than 70 ways that I discussed that dad-deprived boys are indeed deprived We've seen that boys who hurt hurt us. And we've seen, I think most importantly, why we haven't cared about boys being hurt. It's hard to psychologically attach to a sex that, has been, that we are likely to lose if they are to succeed. It's hard to protect boys who cannot tell us why they are vulnerable. We need to understand that men's weakness is often our facade of strength. Although our sons are damaged even more than our daughters by the loss of family, father, or emotional disconnection, every boy who is a failure to launch leaves a heterosexual woman without a man who is worthy of her love. That is, a damaged boy damages girls, and a damaged boy becomes a damaged dad who raises damaged daughters. When it comes to men and women, we are not divided into oppressors and oppressed. We are all in the same family boat. When only one sex wins, both sexes lose. Thank you.